All right, 4.5 quadratics in factored form. What we're looking at here is in factored form, the equation looks like y equals a, x minus r, times x minus s. And in this factored form is different from the vertex form in the sense that in factored form, we're looking at not the vertex, but we're looking at the two roots. The the zeros are the x-intercepts, where there is where the graph crosses the x-axis, whether the parabola is opening down or up, and at what points it crosses the x-axis. The vertex form that we just studied involves y equals a, x minus h, all squared, plus k. Note that in factored form and vertex form, they both have a variable a. So the a is no different whether you have it in factored form or in vertex form. Now, we also know that the r and the s can also help us find the axis of symmetry. How can it help us find the axis of symmetry? Well, you can see that the r and the s are equally distant away from the axis of symmetry. So we can calculate our axis of symmetry by taking our r plus our s and dividing by 2. So these are the x coordinates, only the x part of these coordinates, adding the x's and dividing by 2 to find the middle, and that will equal our axis of symmetry. x equals r plus s divided by 2 will be the equation for our axis of symmetry. Looking at example number one, you're asked to consider the relation y equals 2, x plus 3, times x minus 4, and you're asked, what direction will the parabola open? Looking here, this form is in the, uh, y equal, uh, in the factored form, the y equals a, x minus r, and x minus s form, so you should automatically be able to find the a value. And if you're looking carefully, you'll see that the A value is located right here. So what is our A value? Well, our A value is 2. That means it is positive. If the, if the A value is positive, the graph must open up. And here's our explanation. The graph opens up because the A value is positive. Part B asks to sketch and show the zeros vertex and axis of symmetry and the y equals oh, sorry the y intercept all on a graph so we need to find some information first of all the parts of information that we're given are the zeros how do we know what they are well if we look inside our cloud you'll notice our pink and blue clouds here inside our cloud we have an x plus 3 what is the opposite of plus 3 you got it folks it's minus 3. So negative 3, 0, is one of our x-intercepts. Looking in the other cloud, that's the brackets, we can see that it says x minus 4, but remember when we pull it out, it becomes positive 4. So 4, 0 is our other intercept, our zeros. Next thing we're looking at is we need the axis of symmetry, and we can do that by adding our x's in the zeros and dividing by 2. So we found our zeros, we found our axis of symmetry, so negative 3 plus 4, all divided by 2. Don't forget to divide the whole numerator by 2, and we get 1 half. So x equals a half is our axis of symmetry. We also need the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, what do we do? Well, we need to sub x equals 0 into the equation. And when we do that, we get the value of 0, negative 24. Once we do that, we now have our zeros, axis of symmetry, and y-intercept. We need to move forwards and find the last piece, which is our vertex. How do we do that? Notice I have this written here, sub x equals a half. Why am I subbing the axis of symmetry into the vertex? Well, that is because our axis of symmetry actually is our x value of our vertex. So the only piece we're missing is our y value. Plug it in to the equation and we get the following. 
y equals negative 49 over 2, and that turns out to be these coordinates right here. So now we're going to graph our function. All right, all of these coordinates we need to plot on our graph, and keep in mind that when you plot in your graph, you want to create a graph so that you can see it across the whole thing. So, what do we need to see? Well, our x-axis is located near the top because none of these have a negative, uh, sorry, a positive y value. So we can move our x-axis right to the top of the screen or near the top. And our y-axis is located slightly to the left because of the fact that we have more positive x values than we do uh, negative x values. So again, the y-axis moves so that we can display our information as widely and as much as possible. So we look at our scale. So here we go, the scale along the x-axis. We want to be able to graph from negative 3, lowest on the x, all the way up to 4, which is the highest on the x. And this allows us a nice range right here. So from negative 3 all the way to 4. The next part we have to do is find out what we're going to determine our scale to be going downwards. Well, if we were to count by 1, so each block is 1, or each tick is 2 if you want, we would not get to negative 24. In fact, we won't get anywhere near there. So we need to determine a different value. Some people may say that the value should be going by threes. The problem is, is we also have to be uh, keep in mind we have to graph negative 24.5. If we went every two block is three, we would get to negative 24. In fact, we'd get beyond that. But the problem is, how do we graph negative 24.5 with this vision in mind? It's a little bit harder. So we chose a scale that goes by fours. So every tick goes by fours. And here would be negative 20. This would be negative 24. I know it's not all the way to the bottom, but it's a good representation based on the grid that you're given. Now we need to graph this. And sure enough, there's our graph. Don't forget that we want a nice, smooth, rounded curve, no pointy. Try to make it as smooth as possible. I know this seems a little bumpier than usual, but the idea has to be this nice, smooth, rounded curve with arrows at the end of each. And this graph opens up, and it has a vertex at, at 1 half and negative 24.5, and this is our 0, negative 24. Where did this point come from? Some of you might be wondering, how did we get a fifth point when there are only four coordinates listed here? Well, remember, every point across the axis of symmetry has a matching point. So this is at 0 0.5 right here, and over here it's at 0. From 0 to 0 0.5, the value is here is 24. So if we go across to the other side and go 0 0.5 to the right, we should be able to have a matching point, and we do here. So again, the idea is that you have five points on a graph just so that you have a good representation of the function you need to draw. Example number two, the zeros of a parabola are negative three and five. The parabola crosses the y-axis at negative 75. What is the equation of the quadratic relation in factored form? And what are the coordinates of the vertex? The reason why I want to give you a problem here that doesn't have scaffolded a, part A, part B, part C, is that this is an example of where you might be experiencing a question which has multiple parts embedded within the question. It is important that you, ab you are able to answer all the parts embedded within the question. So occasionally you're going to have these type of questions. Now here, what is the equation of the quadratic relation factor form? That's one part that we need. The other part is what are the coordinates of the vertex? So how do we do this? Well, we sub r equals negative 3 and s equals 5. And what else are we going to sub? How do we know that those are r and s? Well, it says here that these are the zeros. They're the roots. And we're going to now also sub the point. What is the point? Well, 0, negative 75. We're going to plug the point in for x and y 
into our factored form equation. So sometimes you have to decide which form you want to put it in based on the information given. So here we go. We're given the roots and we're plugging in the roots. We're plugging in a point, so it's a point other than the roots, and that's our y-intercept. And we plug it in for x and y into the general equation because ideally we're searching for the value of a. Plug it in, so we have negative 75 equals a times, now let's just quickly go over why is that the case. y is negative 75 equals a, which we don't know, which we're trying to find x is 0, r is negative 3, so it becomes 0 plus 3, x again is 0, minus s, so minus 5, and we're going to plug this in, we're going to multiply these values, and we're going to get negative 75 equals negative 15a. From that, we divide both sides, yes folks, both sides, by negative 15. And we get a is equal to 5. So what we've discovered now is the a value, which tells us the part of the equation we were missing. So our final equation is y equals 5, x plus 3, and x minus 5. Keep in mind that in any equation, whether it be linear or quadratic, there is always a y, and there always is an x squared. And how we're going to have an x squared is we're going to learn the new, in the next unit how this actually becomes x squared. If you remember from grade 9, x times x gives you x squared. All right, last part, what are the coordinates of the vertex? Well, we have our zeros. Okay, one more time. We have our zeros here, folks, right here. And knowing our zeros, we can find the other part that we need. So axis of symmetry means that we do find our axis of symmetry, and we find out that x equals 1. So it's negative 3 plus 5 all divided by 2, which gives us 1. Don't forget, it's the whole thing gets added first before we divide by 2. So x equals 1 is part of our vertex, our axis of symmetry, which is also our x value of our vertex, and now we need to find the y value of our vertex. So we sub x equals 1 into the equation and that we found, and we plug in x equals 1 here, and we get y equals 80. So our vertex, folks, is y, sorry, y equals negative 80. So the vertex here, folks, is 1 and negative 80. All right, moving forwards. We have this picture right here. What is this picture? Well, this is a picture that is looking out from the CNE out onto Dufferin Street. And that's right, folks. This is known as the Dufferin Gate. The Dufferin Gate pictured here is a parabolic arch that is approximately 20 meters tall and approximately 22 meters wide. Determine the equation to model the arch with the left base located on the x-axis, four units to the left of the y-axis, and label the x-intercepts and the vertex. So, what is this information saying? Well, we know here that it's 20 meters tall, so that's the height, so 20 meters tall, and approximately 22 meters wide. So from base to base, it's about 22 meters wide. Determine equation to model the arch with the left base located on the x-axis, four units to the left of the y-axis. So, four units to the left of the y-axis would mean it starts at negative four. And then 22 meters later, that would be over here, we would have the other base. So the left base and the right base are located at negative 4 and 18 respectively. Now where would it be 20 reach the 22 meters high coming up this arch right here? Well if you look carefully we should be able to figure that out. We have our R which is negative 4 and our S which is 18 and we can find out where the axis of symmetry can be located. 
That will be at negative 4 plus 18 all divided by 2, which gives us x equals 7. This gives us our axis of symmetry. So at 7, over here, if we look down here on the graph, whoops, just a second, at 7, right here, we can plot all the way up to 20 going up all the way here. So our vertex is at 720, there it is. And what we're going to do is that the next part says determine an equation. So I could graph this. In fact, we could even take this picture, which if we do in a second, I could technically even fit this picture right over our graph. And let's see if we can do that. We can do it. And we can take our, and then just literally, oh, it doesn't allow us to do it. But technically, I could have easily have put this right over the graph and put it on there. But the idea is that our grid, we should be able to fit our grid right on top of here so that the dots match here, here, and here. All right, so we're going to sub these points in, R, S, and the vertex in for the equation, and we get the following. And lo and behold, we need to find the a value. So our a value turns out to be negative 20 over 121. So our final equation for this problem is going to be y equals negative 20 over 121 times x plus 4 times x minus 18. Our vertex is located right here. This is our vertex. And our uh, what else do we have to do? Label the x-intercepts, and these are our roots right here. Our roots. Okay, right here and right here. So we have all the values that we need on our graph. All right, that's the end of the video, folks. Have a great day. Have a numerical day. Take care.